Natasha, would you like to introduce yourself? I mean, I've known you for a year, but a lot of others don't. So, um, so yeah, I'm a I'm a new media artist. Um, um, also interdisciplinary sort of an artist. Um, work a lot with uh, algorithms and uh, performance. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's a brief like just of it okay <coughs> so although like i've looked at your work and i mean i've i've you know access to your portfolio i don't know much about your like early schooling like i'm sure there might be certain experiences in your childhood that tri- that you know come that surface back mm-hmm. right like today you were mentioning about party classes mm-hmm. right so tell me about if if that there's anything that comes to your mind um so um yeah so i've i've been a science student and um i was like really good in um, sketching and illustrations like uh, a lot of uh, my work was like at that time also was very visual um as far as i remember um and um yeah after schooling i did a uh, stunt in uh, psychology where you know i did like uh, but then after that it didn't really like work out because i wanted to like go out of delhi yeah i mean i could be probably honest here but uh, yeah my childhood has not been like so great um i have had a very like a chaotic sort of a background um uh, then so i i needed to like move out of uh, delhi so i was mostly like in exile sorts post uh, by schooling and uh, that is the reason why i just like picked up um this course in uh, nift and i came to hyderabad and i like kind of um, just juggled between like the the course there and the the work that i did but i was really like interested in um, hands on sort of like uh, crafty sort of things like pottery and you know products uh, product design and a um, <coughs> lot of installation work i did like really large scale installation work at that time i did um and in my uh, thesis project also i worked with uh, andhra pradesh uh, tourism in vishakhapatnam mm-hmm. where i did uh, like i did a uh, very large installation called ship in the bottle and it was right by the um, by the coast okay. and uh, this was for rishi this was in rishikonda beach for a, um it was a restaurant and but then there was a festival a new year's festival that i i designed the whole set for so i like the whole area which was about good, good uh 20 25 meters so i had installed um like dome shaped arches and at the end i had like uh, some um sort of sails uh which were backlit with um, you know like uh, uh like i wanted to give it like a feel of a of a flame so that is that that is like one of the inspirations that i worked with at that time and um yeah so that was during my grad and um then i i did like worked a bit on graphic design <coughs> i had my own firm at that time uh, so i was also consult like a, a freelancer sorts um so did like couple of graphic design work uh, with the ministry of sound and a uh, lot of like clubs night clubs that were there um but then i was i was still like wanted to expose myself to like uh, the creative technology bit um so that is when i like enrolled for communication design in csm um st jean martins in uk that that exposed me a lot to um the the creative tech scene happening in, in the uk and in europe um i had gone to uh, serbia I, i remember once um which where i i was following this artist called memo akin okay and he's uh he's a digital artist himself and uh, i i wanted to see his work personally so i went to serbia to to see his work and there you know i, I was just like blown away with the kind of tech that they were working with but that they there was still like projection mapping sort of things mm-hmm. um but then um yeah since since my uh, childhood like my brother is uh, he's diagnosed with schizophrenia okay right so and um, so you are so two siblings m- yeah we are, okay. we are very much siblings and there was like always this um, 
like psychological aspect to things right like and i just wanted to like understand human mind and like how it fun- works and how it functions and what what yeah. is the difference between reality and illusion hmm. right because i've always seen him like Trying talking to figure things out yeah, yeah and like talking things which are not there and we're all kind of convincing him that it's not there but for him it's reality right so i always wanted to kind of and i with being his younger sister i empathize with that a lot and i was like you know i also want to see what you're saying maybe what you're saying is right you know and uh, so that got me a lot into like the human mind and the the human functioning mm. and um, yeah so then i did my project on you know like how i can leverage creative technology to increase the attention span of children that made me more empathetic probably and more sensitized to like these um under the cover under the hood sort of topics like mental disorder and that, that was like topics. back then yeah. right now Which it is this was like 2010 uh, 15 was my undergrad postgrad was like 2012 13 so we're talking back then so you now you get like some connecting dots <laughs> yeah so you actually gave me a follow up like my follow up question was this but then you gave me a detailed answer as to mm-hmm. your current projects and how they relate to your right. childhood memories so um i understand you're also you also had a design career initially mm-hmm. right so how do how does your um, career as a designer and your current endeavor in like becoming an artist right how does that um, work for you and how does um how do you see yourself navigating those through yeah. these terrains since i was i i mean i never aimed to become like a designer since like so lot of my batchmates had literally prepared for nift and there are like coaching co- yeah, uh, yeah. classes and stuff for nift or nit but i stuff. never did that i it was very like impromptu for me because i wanted to get out of uh, the chaotic world that i was in and i wanted to run away mm. and um you know uh, there were like and because i had a science stream so i was getting a lot of like um like uh, like chances to get into du and i did like two months of like a small stint there and then i did like uh, in zoology as well and da 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 but um but coming back to the question the design just happened by chance right by accident and when i was there also uh, most of my work if i see it in like hindsight they were all very um they were very related to um the indian sort of culture or the the indianness in it like yeah. the kama sutra is one i was hmm. talking about or the kish art or um you know the, i was very good in photography like i got like some good awards in photography back in school hmm. so uh, it wasn't for me it wasn't like designed design unless i until i actually did some uh, projects in design let's say graphic design and then after that when i joined a uh, a startup where i was a design researcher there i found like okay i am like my 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 process is very research based and i like to kind of um, know the subject understand the subject and then try to figure out like you know where where what where what would i like to kind of um what what do i connect with and you know what would i like to kind of uh express and represent because other if you do, if i don't feel for it there's no point like you know even um chasing it but right? you know so what i mean is um so design is all about solving problems mm. you know, it's 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 problem based right but wh- while when we look at you know art it's 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 not yeah. that approach it's more about expression than yeah. you know, solving problems so do you see um do you do you experience a switch happening uh, in you know like your artistic practice um as in in terms of you know like because you are a designer you've right. been a designer do you how do you like do you do you experience a switch while you're working on your art based projects um there is no conscious um, effort yes i mean um, like i've been asked right like if you if i worked on yoga and technology why don't you um, do something in that regard right like and i was in fact working on a yoga mat mm-hmm. uh, which is basically tracking your body movement and correcting your postures but then i felt when i was doing that project and i we did that we made a prototype and everything but then when i was doing it i was like do i really want to force this yeah. right being a yoga practitioner do i really want that right if the practice if you are a serious practitioner it will come to you and you would like but now th- there are products already out there who which is doing something similar hmm. so um 
I mean, is I think I'm not making a deliberate effort to kind of look for uh, like solutions in my practice. But yes, uh, as I said, that there was another project that I did for like uh, where I was looking at increasing the attention span of children. So at that time, I was literally looking at you know how um, technology is like just overpowering and like you know um, and there are so many like um, tabs open in front of you and you cannot like the attention span yeah. is just reducing zero point three seconds. Uh, sorry, three seconds. Um, now, um, you know, it's just three seconds. You can pay attention to one thing, and then you get to in the so other. So that yeah. is like crazy, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, these things. But I, b- my expression has always been artistic, and uh, and uh, design just comes in terms of like the sensibility of like colors, and you know, um, also like the design thinking, where you know you're looking at uh, researching the topic first, and then understanding. Uh, where you want to like uh, put your feet and like you know like okay. start hmm. exploring that further. Also, with respect to like time blow or Nadi, where did hmm. this whole or even generative art? Let's right. yeah, let's just yeah, use I that. Mean, <laughs> yeah, so, so where did this start? Right. Give me a point where does it start? I, even if it like you can't point it out. Okay, this is where. Yeah. But um, how did you get? How did how did you get introduced to the topic of generative art? Yeah, so now, like, hmm. so if you think about, like, even as a designer, like, I, I don't like to call myself a designer because I know there are some serious designers so out there yeah. who are, like, doing a lot of cool work, right? So it would be unfair uh, to call myself a designer. But then um, the project that I picked up under Timeless Studio uh, were design-oriented, right? So especially communication design because, let's say, for this, uh, this project that we did for Aether, uh, Aether Energy is a electric vehicle yeah. a startup uh, in based out of Bangalore. But uh, for them, what we did was like uh, there was a lot of data that was coming from their electric scooters. So they wanted something which can be installed in the retail store, which could be a point of conversation for their sales team, mm. right? So we we had designed a whole software and we we developed the whole software for them where you know the data was being visualized as like uh, signatures right and it was plotted on a on a map so it was we were gamifying that experience for the uh, um, for the customers and uh, that is now being installed like in every store uh, ether has so that that became like a good business model for us to sustain ourselves so that is where i I came as a designer but then you know obviously there is an artistic expression where or the generative art uh, is there because um, then we are looking at you know how data is translated into signatures and mm-hmm. how data can also talk about behavioral patterns, right? And every every person will have like a has a different sort of um, behavioral pattern, and then that rep- that is represented in their data stream, and then we translate into signatures. So every person has a different signature. Uh, specifically for the riding uh, behavior, it'd be every individual had a different signature of riding. Mm-hmm. So, so that is where we we blend in generative art and design together with tech. I mean, there's clearly um, you know a generative art as a medium. I mean, I mean the algorithmic format mm. of you know. Uh, transforming data hmm. is something that appeals to you. Is hmm. there a reason why why do you choose this? Yeah, medium? I mean it appeals to me <laughs> from every <laughs> angle. Like but I'm, why I'm blown away because I feel like it's uh, pretty much like unmanifested and unseen. And um, I like the idea that you know there is something which is which is not seen with with your eyes, right? And I am as an artist, or uh, I'm able to bring that out for you. Mm-hmm. Right, so because I myself am blown away with the the results the outcome, because yeah. you know um, so I'm trying to kind of um, chase an idea or chase like some some sort of concept, and then when it kind of brings out some form, I get I get surprised myself. So th- it's it's the same way. Like I I like to put that across and like see people's reaction. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um. So you know when you say this one thing really comes up to my head like even when for example even when you look uh, work with conventional art practices right like when you're using this method of just like let's say painting um, the artist would not know what he's gonna draw or in the end what he's gonna paint but there's this 
believe in that process right ki yeah i'm going to paint and that i don't know how yeah. it's going to turn out we'll see about that so could you could, do you relate to that like there was a question about this as well like do you yourself indulge in any um, conventional art practices yeah i mean i'm uh, so i i mean i i mean i i've, I've been painting all my life hmm. um uh, but like again like so like i i love to play with like pastels um and um acrylic colors and you know like uh, and also a lot of charcoal so um but i like my my art is always like messy and it is very uh, sometimes very disturbing <laughs> right so that's like the the chaotic side of of me so what i see because i am i have gone through so much right like I didn't have like a really ordered a uh, structure in my childhood my mother was also going through a lot of stuff and you know there was a lot of uh, uh, conflict between us so um i think that represents in my um, like the impressions that mm-hmm. has been in my in trying to create in me. order so so exactly that is when i see uh, i i'm seeking like order ordered structure yours, yeah. right so i'm trying to seek order in let's say nari mm-hmm. right so you would say that it's it's very symmetric and you know one of my friends also said that you're seeking symmetry are you <laughs> and i'm like i don't know but it gives me like some sort of like uh, pleasure pleasure or like peace of mind that you know i can i can make sense in that fashion mm-hmm. so what is the uh, artistic approach that you take that you believe amounts to the appeal of each of your work and i think that question i think you've already answered Uh, with the tools and te- uh, techniques facilitated by generative creation, there is a visible shift from 3D to ND, uh, which is apparent in most of your work. How and why do you aim for that, and uh, what does it mean to you in your practice? I, I mean, three dimensional too. Ah, uh, a higher dimension like mm-hmm. ND, probabilistic or high dimensional perspective. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't know how you decipher <laughs> that from my like. No, like the, for, for example, the Nadi, uh, the. cultural manifestation of it i feel it's it's three dimensional of course mm. but when you look at the form itself it's not three dimensional it 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 shows the human body doing the yogic stance but it's it a higher di- it's at a higher dimension i feel mm. you know it's not at the dimension that is visible to us but the it captures the entire movement of the body mm. so i that's what i thought it would make sense to you but <laughs> I, i mean don't know. see again so i mean my, for me the objective or like i don't ever think about okay i need to see something um of course i mean i want to see something unseen and unmanifested and i like to manifest that in my expression in my art expression but it's never been like a conscious effort ki mujhe sculpture hi banana hai or i want to make it as a painting or i want to make it at that way it's just it's a very organic and a very intuitive sort of response like i'm responding to it i'm just responding to it instantly so if this is asking me to do this i'm making it happen no but the choice yeah. of the medium again choice th- of the that's, medium yeah that's because you're dispo- like it's 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 because i had never i never had a very strong artistic uh, you know uh, schooling right so i've never been trained that i need to work with only this medium right or i need to i need to work with uh, let's say lithography or lino cut sort of things or you a know a quick question mm. so when did it uh, occur to you that um, that okay this this whatever this is that i'm making is art yeah i mean when i did assume, that, yeah, when did that that's, happen that's like that realization yeah mm, i mean um, i mean for myself i think it's it's art because there is no other place of for it right like it is something which is uh, very personal to me so I really do not I am not in a quest to kind of have people understand it right now I I feel like because I want to make more right I want to now I want to take up kolam project right and then and and I want ke you know that um I want to see people's reciprocation to it because I've been also working on nadi for quite some time and um now that I, you know I'm slowly slowly kind of opening myself to the the public and seeing people's re- response to it um I would I mean it's just I'm just giving what uh, what I see and feel sometimes I also feel like okay why are these topics or why are these subject matters coming my way right why why am I picking uh, yoga or kolam or mm. you know these these things so, but then you know um, it's again right I'm trying it's to find find order in chaos, chaos. 
because even kolam for that matter is like very ordered sort of like it is a it a rule based mm. sort of a practice that you need to put like points on the ground mm. and you need to have like the line going around those points and you need to encapsulate all the points it talks about the emotional status of the family and also another thing is that it it see i'm again i'm speaking for myself here which i find funny but these are the things that my friends have observed in my art practice right so they say that you you're you're actually seeking something which has been um, inherited right so yoga is also like inherited from yeah. a teach it's a, like a teacher to student, student relationship kolam is also like a mother to daughter, daughter relationship and um and yeah maybe that was something which was lacking in my life and i'm i'm maybe i'm in an in an idealized state where i'm hoping or i'm i was i'm wishing that i wish that had happened and maybe that would have happened this would have happened so i'm trying to kind of create my own space you know 